Welcome back to the Meddling Kids Podcast, a groovy review of Scooby-Doo. I'm your host, Julie Kin, and today we're talking about a Highland fling with a monstrous thing from Season 3 of Scooby-Doo, Where Are You? And I love this episode because there's kilts. And if you're more interested in kilts and men in kilts, my brother and I did an episode on the Station Wagon podcast where we both gave up wearing pants for two weeks and he wore a kilt. It was pretty great. Anyway, let's get back to the show. So we see a sign for Castle Macduff, tourists welcome. And in the distance, a large foreboding castle surrounded by a moat. The gloomy atmosphere and lightning and thunder make it less inviting, although I'm sure it's lovely in summer. Oh no, a bunch of tourists are running for their lives while shouting for help. Now, that's not very communicative. If this ever happens to you, please shout fire or monster or something more specific. And meanwhile, we see a girl in cute traditional Scottish garb saying, Wait, please, all of you, don't go! Sorry for my bad Scottish accent. In the face of adversity, she does the only thing she can. From her office, she leaves a message for Velma. Aggie Macduff called. It's urgent. She must come tonight. Okay, that's totally British accent. Sorry. Is Velma flying over with the gang from the States? I hope Scooby's not flying United. As Aggie hangs up the phone, we see the shadow of some sort of monster over her as she screams. Actually, the shadow looks like a dinosaur or the snow beast from a couple episodes back. Now we see the mystery machine driving through Scottish mist. The mystery machine has to stop as a road is blocked by sheep and cattle. Scooby goes out to shepherd them away, and he walks out dressed like a British policeman Bobby and uses a stoplight and whistle to communicate with the livestock. This is pretty successful until a goat refuses to move, so Scooby writes up a ticket for jaywalking and sticks it on one of the goat's horns. I love this show. The machine continues to drive through fog and almost falls into Loch Ness. They hear bagpipes outside, and Shaggy sees a glowing ghost dude with bagpipes and bright red hair. Is it Jamie from Outlander Books? Is this up about to get super steamy? I am all on board. Scooby sees the glowing dude out the window, and he fogs up the window himself so he can write yikes on it, like with his paw in the fog. I'm glad my kids didn't see this episode because they would definitely use this trick to leave, you know, colorful messages on my car windows. The mystery machine drives away quickly. Now the kids are really concerned about Aggie. Daphne declares this is the spookiest mystery they've ever had. Daphne, I agree with you this is a little spooky, but I still think A Night of Fright is No Delight is the spookiest so far. Ever since we saw Cousin Normal and the rest in coffins along a doggy-shaped coffin in the basement of the house. Ooh, that was scary. Kids go to the Jolly Scott Inn to ask for directions to Aggie's castle. And this rude dude claims to be an innkeeper, but he's totally horrid to the kids. He says there's no room at the inn. Where have I heard that one before? And he warns them also not to go to the castle. Basically, this dude must just be really sick of tourists. Shaggy and Scooby want to take his advice and flee until Velma gives them a big guilt trip. Thanks, Velma. They follow the directions to the castle. Scooby and Shaggy climb up a drawbridge to try to help the mystery machine get in. Scooby is almost crushed due to Shaggy's incompetence and negligence with lovers and pulleys. But fortunately, a chief of staff in an awesome outfit helps Shaggy get in. Now, this dude's name is Jamie, but he does not look like the Jamie in the Outlander books. He looks more like a 50-something math teacher. Friendly, portly, comforting. He's in tight pants and a red coat. And I'm not sure if this is supposed to be some traditional outfit. He kind of looks like a matador, but it's a good look. Aggie greets them and says that Jamie has also seen the ghost. And he recognized it as her great-grandfather, Finian Macduff. And she points to a painting on the wall. The theory is that he's mad, or I'm sorry, that he's angry that she's been taking in guests to keep the castle running. Mad means crazy, I guess, in Scotland. Velma is pretty dismissive of this idea. Meanwhile, Shaggy and Scooby help themselves to food. 
Now, there's been food laid out for the tourists, and the feast looks unusually amazing. There's a bunch of different meat, veg, and jello, and and when Scooby eats the jello, it makes them all wiggly. James, again, not the sexy James, just regular James, shows the kids to their rooms. We see Nessie outside in the moat, just chilling and waiting to strike. Inside the castle, Scooby and Shaggy are sharing an amazing room. So sometimes I like to imagine my ideal bedroom to help me get to sleep, and I'm totally going to picture this. Separate beds with cool, regal-looking canopies, vaulted ceilings, paved stone floor. And Shaggy's complaining about how cold it is, but that actually makes for better sleep, Shaggy. Learn your sleep hygiene. Scooby's brushing his teeth with vigorous enthusiasm. Gotta take care of those canine canines. While Shaggy's snuggling under his blankie trying to get warm, Nessie pokes her head in through the open window and breathes hot dragon breath on him. He thanks Scooby for turning up the heat. Then Nessie stretches her long neck over to where Scoob is performing his ablutions and does the same to him. So far, Nessie seems pretty cool. Unfortunately, Scooby faints from fear when he sees Nessie. Then Nessie breathes on Shaggy again and wakes him. He shouts for help, and the other kids arrive. They look out the window and see the specter of Finian flying through the air while playing bagpipes. Okay, that's pretty amazing to play bagpipes while flying. But the most amazing slash disappointing thing is his kilt remains totally in place through all of this. Please refer back to my fondness for the Outlander books. So what happens to him and his kilt? Will we ever see what's underneath? We'll find out after this commercial break. Rashomon, a land where spirits roam and witches rule. Three women are embroiled in a divine plot, and it is up to them to uncover why. Join the adventures of the Broadswords at thebroadswords.com. We're back, and the kids are excited to split up and search for clues. We see some random eyes watching Shaggy and Scooby through a hole in the wall as they open up closets. Shaggy opens up one door and finds it stuffed full of armor. I kind of hope we get to see Scooby in that armor at some point. Scooby opens a bunch of doors and eventually finds the ghost again. But when Shaggy opens the door, all they see behind it is just a brick wall, like in the Winchester Mystery House. The ghost is totally gaslighting Scooby, who thinks he just imagined it. Then they go into this lovely library with a big fire in the hearth and a bowl of marshmallows for toasting. I could spend a week in a room like this. But from between the books, we see eyes watching these boys pretty spooky. Or I guess that's more creepy than spooky. They start roasting the marshmallows and do an excellent job of it. The trick is keep it away from the fire, take your time, and turn, 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 turn. Don't let it touch the fire. Scooby eats his own marshmallows and Shaggy's too. But Shaggy is distracted from being upset when he finds a note on the ground. It's ripped, but it appears to say, Switzer, and then there's the tear, 100 wrist watches tear. They're confused, and they theorize that this is an order for wristwatches for a centipede. But unfortunately, they fall down a trapdoor after some mystery dude or dudette pulls a lever. Now, beware of extreme creepiness coming up. You might want to, you know, fast forward a couple minutes. In this dungeon or oubliette, there's a perfectly preserved skeleton hanging from a rack with a Scottish hat and sash on. Will we ever learn who this corpse belonged to, or is this just one of those dead bodies the writers sometimes throw in to give a spooky atmosphere but we never actually return to? Sorry for ending that phrase on a preposition, but I'm still shaken up by this cadaver. And, spoiler alert, nope, you never get to find out who that is. Just some random dead body, for the plot's sake. So, anyway, this skeleton gets scared of Scooby, and then both the dog and Jack Skellington run away from each other. Scooby runs to Shaggy and knocks him into a coffin. Yes, a coffin. Come on, this is a kid's show. Meanwhile, the big kids and Aggie are investigating the tower where they saw the ghost. Up there, they find a clipping from a newspaper indicating heavy fog tonight in the Loch Ness area. Apparently, the ghost is also a litter bug. 
Shaggy and Scooby go up a stairwell to escape the dungeon. But the ghost is up there. Oh, no. Chasing. Antics in doorways. You know, like when you're in a hallway scene and Scooby-Doo or the monkeys and people are coming out one hallway door, going into another, and then switching direction and coming out random doors. That thing. And then Shaggy and Scooby trick the ghost by pretending to be a rock and roll band performing. You can see awesome pics of Scooby in a blonde afro on social media. Scooby does a rendition of You Ain't Nothing But a Hound Dog, but I couldn't really understand what he was saying. It sounded like You Ain't Nothing But a Batsicle, but I'm 50% sure I'm mistaken. Please tweet at me or join us on the Meddling Kids podcast discussion group to weigh in. So, Daphne, Velma, and Fred, and Aggie are looking in the dining hall for Shaggy and Scooby. They find a random roll of wire, and they surmise that this, in addition to the trash they picked up earlier, were clues. The team reunites after Shaggy and Scooby get chased through a turning door right into the dining hall. Velma and Fred kind of irk me when Velma leans across Daphne to say to Fred, are you thinking what I'm thinking, Fred? And he's like, I sure am, without including Daphne or Aggie in the discussion. Come on, what are they, chopped liver? And what's up with the telepathy? I mean, I know it's a way of keeping the audience in suspense, but just once, I'd like to see Daphne be the one to withhold information. The gang and Aggie go down to the dungeon and see fresh footprints. By accident, Scooby and Shaggy go through a different tunnel and get lost-ish. They get trapped in a storage room by the ghost. They try smashing a bunch of stuff against the door, and they accidentally break a cask of ancient whiskey. It is so painful to see this. In a different room, the big kids find crates full of fresh Swiss watches. Scooby and Shaggy escape to outside through a window. I guess they were in an upstairs dungeon? Scooby plays some random bagpipes that he found to alert the others. And suddenly, Nessie appears, and the ghost, and the big kids. And then Daphne, yay, at a girl, notices that Nessie is homing in on the ghost's bagpipes. So Fred uses Scooby's bagpipes to lure Nessie into a different section of the moat, and it totally works. On the way to hear Scooby, Nessie yoinks up the ghost by his kilt and carries him over, but we don't get to see what's under there. Sigh. Oh, did I mention that Shaggy is riding on Nessie's head? Like, when he got out of the window from the upstairs dungeon and Nessie was there, somehow he ended up on her head. I was taking notes and didn't quite catch that. Once Nessie is in the enclosed section of the moat, they pump out the water, and we see that Nessie is half beast, half machine. They remove the mask from the ghost, and it was Jamie Cragmore, the kindly chief of staff. It was all about a wristwatch smuggling operation, which the tourists were interrupting. Nessie hid a miniature submarine that helped smuggle in the watches. It was an automatic sub that got its directions from the sound of bagpipes. You know, a totally normal thing to do. When the ghost appeared to be flying, it was actually just Jamie sliding along a wire, like you do. Scooby reappears with bagpipes, a cute hat, a kilt, and let me note, it is very clear that he is not wearing pants under that kilt, by the way. But he's not entirely authentic because he was actually using a recording of bagpipes on a record to trick the kids into thinking he had improved his skills. I like that dog style. Let me know what you thought of this episode, and if you agree with Daphne that it really was the spookiest mystery they've ever solved. You can get in touch with me on Facebook and Twitter. I'm at Meddling Kids Pod. And of course, I hope you will join our discussion group on Facebook. It's the Meddling Kids Podcast and Scooby Doo Discussion Group, moderated by the fabulous, wonderful bestie Tiff. Thanks, Tiff. Thanks to Dave Seste for the use of our theme song, Night Surfing. And thanks to those of you who've shared this podcast with somebody else. Please rate us on iTunes. And if you don't have iTunes, go borrow your mom's phone. I'm sure she's an iOS user. And rate us there. That would be really awesome. And remember, next time you're shopping for a kilt, you would have gotten away with it if it weren't for us meddling kids.